In this video, we're going to cover something that I covered a bit in the boot camp, the math boot camp, where I talked about translating equations into words. So if this is something that you're having issues with, just the terminology I'm going to use, you might want to go check out that video. And again, this is just a general lesson. I'm not going to go into the content. I assume you know the content from the boot camp. I'm just showing you how to apply it. So if there's any questions, you can obviously leave a comment and ask me if anything's unclear. But in terms of content questions, definitely go back to the boot camp and make sure you got that foundation down. Uh, this is just meant to technique. So just keep that in mind. Uh, in these problems, we're going to take words and we're going to translate them into an equation. And we may or may not solve that equation in the end based off of what the question's asking. So let's go ahead and, and work this through. Squaring the product of z and 5 gives the same result as squaring the sum of z and 5. Which of the following equations could be used to find all possible values of z? So instead of trying to match this to this, let's just write this out our own way and then match it. Squaring the product of z and 5. Well, the product of z and 5 is just 5z. And then we're going to square that. So let's go ahead and put that in parentheses. It gives the same result, in other words, equals as squaring the sum of z and 5. So it's going to be z plus 5 squared, which the following equations could be used. So let's just match it up. 5z squared, careful, doesn't have the parentheses. You can get rid of that. 5z squared, that looks good. Equals z squared plus 5 squared. No, this does not equal what we're looking for, which is z plus 5 squared. So we can get rid of b. 5 squared z, no. 5z squared, yep. z plus 5 squared, yep. That looks good. We'll check e, no. So d is going to be the answer to that one. Notice this one, we actually didn't have to solve it, uh, but that's okay. We just go ahead and get the equation and then move on. When a certain number is multiplied by 1 quarter and the product is then multiplied by 32, the result is 60. What is this number? Okay, so let's find out. When a certain number, we'll call that n, is multiplied by a quarter, okay, times 1 quarter, and the product is then multiplied by 32. So we're going to take this, multiply it by 32. The result is 60. So this equals 60. What is the number? Okay, we got an equation. Let's go ahead and solve. Uh, so we get n times, well, 1 quarter times 32 is 8. So n times 8 is 60. Divide both sides by 8. We get n is 60 over 8. Now you can, in a grid in, supply this as your answer. No problem. Uh, you don't have to reduce the fraction. Uh, but we also probably should uh, reduce it just if we want to. So we can reduce it as well to 15 over 2, which is 7.5. So any one of these, a decimal, this fraction, this fraction, all those can work. So that's the answer to that one. Let's look at one from the 2009-2010 test, section 6. If 13 is added to one half of a certain number, the result is 37. What is the original number? Again, this one, even though we have answers, we really can't plug them in because we don't have an equation yet. Now, once we get one, we could plug it in. But let's just go ahead and figure out the equation. 13 is added to, so 13 is added to, one half of a certain number. So one half n. The result is 37 equals 37. What is the number? Okay, so subtract 13 from both sides. We get one half n is 24, or n is 48, which is choice C. The result when a number is divided by 2 is equal to the result when that same number is divided by 4. What is that number? So we could, in theory, plug in the answers, right? So negative 4 divided by 2. Well, that's negative 2. And negative 4 divided by 4 is negative 1. So that doesn't work. Negative 2 divided by negative 2 is negative 1, and so on, right? Well, let's go ahead and do the equation because that's what this video is about. So the result when a number is divided by 2, so n divided by 2, is equal to the result when that same number is divided by 4. n divided by 4. What is that number? Okay, well, let's cross multiply. We get 4n equals 2n. Uh, subtract 2n from both sides. We get 2n equals 0, or n equals 0. Okay, so the answer is 0. And that makes sense, right? Uh, the only way that this could be true, where if you divide a number by 2 and you divide it by 4, you get the same number, is if it's 0, right? Any other number, you divide it by 2, divide it by 4, you're going to get a different number. And you could also, obviously, as I said, check these to confirm. You're going to see that with these, you divide them by 2, you divide them by 4, it gives them a different quotient each time. So C is going to have to be the answer to this one. 3 more than twice a number is equal to 4. What is the number? Okay, so it's 3 more. So when you see 3 more than, you have a plus. Twice a number, 2n, is equal to 4. What's the number? Okay, so we get 2n is 1, or n is a half. Uh, so you can either put a half or 0.5, either one's fine. 
Last question, if three times a number is equal to three halves, what is the number? Okay, so three times a number is equal to three halves. So divide both sides by three, be careful here. You can do this in your calculator, but this three is gonna factor, cancel out the three up here. So we're gonna again get one half. Uh, so the answer here is B. And remember with all these algebra equations, you can always plug in your answer again to check your answer. So we could plug in a half and three times a half is indeed three halves. So you can just go ahead back again and plug your, your answer into the equation and make sure it all works out. But that's, uh, that's all there is to it. You just translate the equation as we talked about in the bootcamp. And as you see here, solve for it and you're done.